Welcome to Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game. Hi everyone, I'm your host, Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money gamer extraordinaire. Today we're talking about the psychology of money with performance expert and money psychologist, Dr. Jack Singer. Dr. Jack, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. I welcome back and I love always doing consumer pieces with you because people and their money, they really shouldn't be two different things, but they're kind of correlated. They really are, and you know, it's uh, it's one of the top three reasons that people get divorced is over money issues. Wow. Uh, when I think about this, Dr. Jack, if you've never heard about Dr. Jack Singer, he's been mostly in the sports world. He's been on ESPN, Fox Sports, even on the Glenn Beck Show. He's actually been the psychologist for Olympic champions, world champions, very much into sports. But the same psychological issues that are really, that really probably attack and really hurt professional athletes are some of the same issues that we deal with as the normal consumer. That's right. It's the same thing in any kind of performance, whether you're looking at performance in your job, whether you're looking at performance in a hobby, performance will always be interrupted by distractions. And the main distraction is having negative thinking. And in this sequence, you want to talk about, you talk about the psychology of money and what money means to people. And sometimes they put such irrational labels on money that it gets in the way of them ever feeling happy. Well, let's talk about the big one, uh, overspending. Uh, we are sitting with the greatest personal consumer debt that any society has ever entered into. Right. The whole entire baby boomers, we've been living on plastic for almost a generation. Right. Yeah, and you know, you think about plastic, it had tremendous advantages, but this is one disadvantage, that people don't stop and think, you know, what's gonna happen down the road. They're very impulsive. So when you tend to be very impulsive and you want what you want today without thinking about the consequences of that tomorrow, then uh, that's a problem. Consumer client that I have lives in a gated community, has a million point one million dollar home. He buys wonderful jewelry for his wife, wonderful cars. They have all the trappings of success. And he confesses to me as I'm pulling out with him going to lunch, he says, I buy all these things to impress people I don't like. Well, there you have someone with a lack of self-esteem because what he's really doing is thinking that he needs to do that to impress other people so mm -hmm. that they will give him business or whatever the, the case may be, give him accolades like him or what have you. So he's doing it all artificially mm -hmm. and it's silly. I mean, I, I, I remember a case where it didn't involve money, but you remind me of a very interesting case once of, um, of a lawyer that uh, resented the fact that he had to keep um, uh, buying expensive dinners for a chiropractor. And the reason he did it was the chiropractor sent him a lot of business with accident cases and things. And he hated the chiropractor, but he felt he had to keep doing that so the chiropractor would look at him in a happy light. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of negative thinking patterns that people get into that really sometimes control their lives in a very unfortunate way. And the problem is, of course, we can go on for a little while until we run up and hit our ceiling debt. Many of our con consumers that are watching our show, and, we're, and this is good because we're actually doing it before the holidays now, yes. so it's a little heads up. We walk in there and we have some of the greatest holidays any human being has ever had since civilized world. I mean, right. really, America holidays, Dr. Jack, nobody yeah. does it better than we do. That's right. But come January, I'm overweight, right? Yep. I'm happy to have my family leave, but right. the biggest thing is I'm saddled with bills. How did I get there? Well, they got there by not thinking carefully about what their spending is all about. Is their spending about wanting people to be impressed with them? Or is their spending about they want their family to be happy and this will make them happy, which it may or may not. But most people are spending because of the image it gives them of other people. I remember having an accountant once who told me he wanted me to drive a certain car so that I would have a certain image for my clients as a psychologist and I refused and drove a Beetle, which I liked, and he thought I was crazy that you know nobody's going to be impressed with me if I'm driving a Volkswagen Beetle. But my feeling was they'll be impressed if the kind of treatment I give them is appropriate. It doesn't matter what kind of car mm. I drive. Well, when you're looking at and the, are are there are really symbols of success really self success? Yeah, in many ways, that's the way we look at things, and mm -hmm. it's it's our cars, and it's the jewelry, and how much jewelry our wife is wearing at parties. You know, think about you're going to a special occasion, and your wife says, do you want me to wear this ring or that ring? And you're thinking, well, I want people to think I'm well off, so, mm -hmm. you know, I want them to see that. And this is all artificial thinking. It's getting away from who you are, and it's trying to impress other people because of your own lack of self-esteem. 
How do we get away from our self-worth is equal to our net worth? That's a really interesting phrase. Uh, uh, it, your self-worth is really based on a multitude of things, including your accomplishments in life and what you have to offer as a person. What are your values? What values have you taught your children? Um, what kind of a volunteer are you in society? Do you volunteer at your church? Uh, do you help other people? This is what makes the quality of somebody, not the amount of money that they spend on a toy. We come back from the break, we're going to talk about some of the role playing that you have when you have core irrational beliefs and how they interact with your spending habits. We'll be right back after the break. It's not how much money you make, it's how much money you keep. And keeping more of your money is even harder these days with high taxes, fund expenses, and fees for financial advice. And when you consider the uncertainty of the market and the rising cost of living, the purchasing power of your dollar is constantly at risk. But a tax-deferred annuity with an inflation rider can be the most cost-effective way to generate increasing annual income without market volatility. For more information on how annuities may work for you, just email me at steve at thenameofthegame.tv and ask for our free annuity information. Well, welcome back to our second segment. Of course, I'm with Dr. Jack Singer. And doctor, I'm looking at some of these irrational beliefs that cause us to spend money or actually mishandle money. I want to talk about the first one because it's a big one. When we go to great lengths to please others, because we feel like if we don't, they'll abandon or reject us. Yes, yeah, so think about that. If I don't please someone 100% of the time, they'll abandon me. That's a form of all or nothing thinking. Uh, and if there really is a person in your life who would do that, what, do you need that person in your life? Mm -hmm. I mean, somebody who would base their relationship mm -hmm. with you strictly on what you're buying for them is mm -hmm. not somebody you want to spend the rest of your life with. When we identify certain irrational thinking, when we finally come to it, I mean, we have to say that is a false thought. Right. That's not a true thought. Right. So how can I graduate from, and I think I heard you say one time in one of your lectures, 55,000 thoughts a day. The human mind thinks yes. negative thoughts. No, 77% oh, of, of that. the 55,000. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just thinking that is programming. Right. And how can I now change programming? And you say it can be changed. Oh, it can be changed. The first thing you have to do is recognize the patterns of your thinking. So, for example, one group of negative thoughts that's very common is what we call catastrophizing. So people mm. think of the worst thing that could ever happen as if that's a high probability. So think about somebody who's going to take a flight somewhere and they start thinking, what if the plane crashes? That is such an unlikely probability, but in the mind of the person who hasn't realized that, it's a high probability and that mm -hmm. they're forming a catastrophe when nothing's happened. Or um, my wife will hate me if I don't buy her this piece of jewelry. Well, if that's true, then you need marital counseling. <laughs> in most cases, it may not be true. Your wife should love you for a lot of things besides what you buy for her. Now you call this, I love this, the disease to please. Yeah, it's not my term. Someone wrote a book with that name, the disease to please. Mm -hmm. And it's really a personality type uh, where people are always afraid of offending others and therefore they will do almost anything even if it offends themselves. And those are people who need assertiveness training to mm -hmm. learn to stand up for yourself and say no instead of always agreeing because you're afraid you'll be rejected. If we have patterns that have caused rejection, and now we start to look at my Discover card, my Citibank card, I'm seeing a reflection of that rejection by my spending habits. Right. Because now I'm getting a written report of my overspending or out of control cash flow. Right. Uh, I'm just a regular consumer, but I see the numbers, and now I'm paying for it, not only psychologically, but I'm paying 18%, That's right. 19%. Right. Yeah, I think you really need to sit down, again, with your partner, if you're married, sit down with your partner and go over rationally what is really a necessity and what is a luxury and can you afford the luxury right now or should you wait a few months. Again, communicating with your partner is the biggest need. That's the biggest problem in relationships is lack of communication and people assuming what the other person is going to think. If we're trying to become good stewards of our finance, which I think everybody, that is an end game. That's a worthy goal. Yeah. And I want to also convey those teachings to my children and grandchildren. But I've been living this life. How do I make the transition from overspending, devaluating myself, having the disease to please, to coming over where I'm a good steward because I've come to peace with myself 
and my self-worth is no longer connected to my network. Right. I think the first thing you need to do is recognize when your thinking has gone astray. Once you realize how to do that, you can learn. There are all kinds of books on this. You can learn how to change that thinking. But I think also in the example that you gave, Steve, have the courage to sit down with your spouse and your children and ask them what they think about your spending. You may, you may be very surprised at the perception they have of what's going on that perhaps they never had the courage to tell you. Hmm. You may have a teenager, for example, say, you really didn't need that car, Dad. It's a nice car, but that doesn't change my feelings about you and or Mom. It doesn't change her feelings. You may be very surprised what people who are close to you really think about what you're doing because you think you're doing the right thing. Hmm. When we become aware that we hear, get outside input, but it's really quality. It's our family, people yes. who love us. And we take it to heart. That transition from moving to where we are, to where we are going, that transitions to me is kind of a, a, a difficult time because I'm, I'm changing something here. Yeah, but you have to do it in the context of showing the family members that they have value because you trust their input and their feedback. That's a big deal. A lot mm -hmm. of adults are afraid to show that to children. They think they're mm -hmm. vulnerable if they do that mm -hmm. or weak. But no, it, think about if you're the adolescent now and your dad or your mom comes to you and says, you know, I make mistakes sometimes like we all do and I want you to know that that's okay, but I need some feedback because I may not be aware of the mistakes. That's gonna be a very impressive thing mm -hmm. for a child to hear. And it, you become then a great role model for them to do the same thing with their families. So I'm even sharing my mistakes and failures with yeah. my family, especially money mistakes. Right. I mean, you, it's one of the top two reasons to divorce. Right. This is a major issue for most Americans. We are fighting over things inside the family unit, right. all based on money, acquisition of things, right. and it's not solving our problems. Right, and you know, part of that is a lot of adolescents want things because their friends have them. Mm. Uh, and they get irritated when you won't provide it for them because they then feel embarrassed in front of their friends that they have it and they don't. You need to be firm about that. So I'm not saying just go to your adolescents for feedback about you, mm -hmm. but you need to be firm and not wishy-washy about things that are not acceptable mm -hmm. that they're demanding just because they feel like they're not part of the crowd if they don't have these items. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. I want to thank Dr. Jack Singer for being my special guest and today's money mentor. And before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always consult your tax advisor or legal counsel. And remember, as the good Reverend John Wesley once said, make all you can, save all you can, give all you can. I'm Steve Savant. We'll see you next week.